been a while since I've done a vlog, so I thought today would be a really interesting one for you guys. Um, I just turned 37 <laughs> this week, and I was looking at my local Facebook ads marketplace, and apparently, apparently some people uh, are not interested in a brand new, or almost brand new, I should say, uh, Midas Pro 1, and they sell it for really cheap with the L251 that I have, so I made a deal with a friend, and I got myself a, a birthday present, not a Christmas present, a birthday present of buying a Pro 1. I'm gonna keep the wing before some people freaked out. The goal of the Pro 1 is because it has 24 preamp locally. If I end up in a situation where I need to have, you know, a small show, uh, I want to bring my own console because what they have there is not good. You know, sometimes I'm still facing uh, people that ask me to use their own analog console and personally it's not cutting it anymore. Like if you want me to work on those, your old Yamaha MG 48 input, whatever with no parametric EQ, no nothing. Um, no, I'm out. So because I have the 24 uh, local preamp on it, I can use a local snake. I don't need to bring a DL, I don't need to bring a Cat5. All I can do is just use the local uh, copper snake that they have there and get a show going because I have so many output, I can do a band. 24 input is usually enough to do a band. So it's gonna be used for that purpose. The wing, uh, I'm gonna keep it with my DL251. If ever needed, I'm gonna bring my DL251 with the Pro One, but I'd rather keep that ohm. I think I know where I'm gonna put the, the Pro 1 for now. I have a show where I'm using an X32 still and I think it will be a big upgrade. I'm gonna try to rent them the Pro 1 for like a really cheap cost. I just don't want to do it for free. As long as I, you know, recover plus a little bit on the console, um, marketing wise, money wise, I should be good. Unfortunately, I was not able to bring you guys inside, but I do have the Pro 1 there. It's really small, I thought it was bigger. It's actually smaller than a Pro 2 Compact. Um, it's almost like close to M32R, but all that to say that I was not able to bring you guys inside the storage room. It just didn't felt like it was appropriate. So, you know, always bring a camera with you uh, all the time. It's not always the best uh, thing for people. They feel uncomfortable being filmed all the time. So. Now, it's in the back of the car. I'm gonna head out to OV Tech where you guys saw me in previous vlog uh, setting up a Pro 2. Do a virtual sound check. I have some file with me from previous band that I've recorded on the wing. Uh, and I believe those show were recorded on the 251. So my just preamp. I'm just gonna digitally play them back into the Pro 1 with uh, a little converter box from Clark Technic. It's uh, AS50 to USB. I don't remember the model, but I'm probably gonna insert a video of that little box as I'm talking. And I'm gonna check out the console, make sure everything is working and make sure that every output is working. But I, I'm so happy. I'm finally a real sound engineer that has a console. A pro console. This pro in the name must be good, right? Bon matin. Comment tu vas?
uh, I actually found in the basement of OviTech. Uh, one of these Yamaha A preamp. Uh, it's a AD8HR. So it's preamp and converter. So that's uh, outputting 96K Yamaha preamp into ASEBU. I have a DB25 connector in the back with ASEBU out and in the back of the console, as you probably guess, I do not have eight, but I have four ASEBU input. I can have a four pair of XLR loose here that will give me an extra four input. So I will bring the console up to 24 plus four, 28 and 28 input will be word for me to update uh, this right here because let me show you guys what's really happening i have the case the actual uh made case made for the pro one where i'm gonna add a little foam here and a second u of rack mount or maybe i'm just gonna glue it down something like that I'm gonna make sure that this is tight and I can pull on the tray to have access to my keyboard or maybe just get rid of um, the drawer, the one new drawer and put the unit there. But I think I'm fine doing this. The case on the console is closing with that unit there. So maybe I'll have uh, two full units there to you. Rack mount in the bottom of that case and Honestly, even if this is getting scratched or anything, um, I don't really care, honestly. I don't know if I told you that, but this console was the last uh, demo, I believe, from AVL, or I was told so, from the guy who was selling it. Um, so it's the last one that, that I was on demo uh, at the shop, and once they uh, legacied the uh, Pro Series, they got rid of it. So this one has about 10 or 12 show on it, and um, it's been used in the studio. It's been sold in 2019, so it's let's say with the years of pandemic and everything, it's never been really used other than on a podcast studio. So honestly, I think I scored a pretty much new Pro One. I'm really happy with that. wondered one thing about the uh, talkback in the back of the console there's actually two talkback labeled uh, input there is one um, on the top here which is labeled talkback and there's also one in the back and I believe they were tied together I believe it's the same physical input but if not maybe I found another way to have a couple extra input on my console. If that's a preamp, I can probably get myself up to 29 with the talkback in the back. two sent out from the main out and I believe the main out in the back were actually always the main out from uh, the console no matter what you know that main out left and this one's called master out left and not monitor out left so I try to figure out 
where they are, and I'm probably stupid. It's probably monitor out left and right, and I need to send my main out bus. Yeah, my main out was uh, on patch, so right there. If I take my 58, here we go. I got a little speaker over there. Working, working fine, working fine. If you never work with a Pro One, uh, the trick when you start the console from scratch, and I'm starting a console from scratch just for fun, take a channel and assign whatever that you need to. And I'm gonna go fast here, but I'm gonna do a video on it. Eventually, this console is gonna be used in a couple of video because I got it, so why not use it? So basically, you need to design your whole channel strip, or from the overview, you select everything that you need to select. Uh, so you know your low cut, you need to enable that also something that i really like to do is i believe the default is uh dynamic into insert into eq i like to have my eq before my insert and my dynamic so i'm gonna invert that i'm gonna basically build the whole channel as a default that i want so insert nothing compressor uh, i done my almost same as the preset from Midas or the default state. Gate, almost the same thing. EQ, uh, totally blank. It's on, I turn it on here on the console, but it's not, you know, affecting anything. I set all my aux to be uh, on and pre-fader, do not send anything in them. Same thing for uh, nine through 16. And uh, my matrices are one through four on and pre-fader, but my uh, five, six, seven, and eight are gonna be what I'm using for my effect, because it doesn't matter on the Pro One if you're using an effect uh, with a matrix or not. And I'm not usually using a lot of matrices, so if ever needed, I'm gonna change that. But by default, I want my last four effects to be these four. I can do eight or actually 12 mix of in-ear from the console which is probably closer to what I'm gonna use most of the time, and just sending out a main left, right, you know, to, to the PA. Um, one thing that you need to do is, yeah, you need to assign your stuff to the main out, and once that is done, you need to copy that channel and right-click with your trackball here. You need to right-click, you need to do paste to all, when you're doing a copy and paste like that, the console know the difference between a main bus and a channel. So it's gonna only copy and paste the channel. It's not gonna copy and paste the bus. So this is what I did here. I just, when I did my copy and paste, it's just from uh, channel one to all the 40 channel available on the console, not uh, the bus. It's not gonna do that thing on the bus because the default setting that I have there, I do not want compression on bus on by default and I don't want to do like low cut. It's not even an option on the bus. So. Uh even if they are displayed here on the same overview console, they are, the console see them as a different thing. So it's just really the uh, five, five, yeah, five, bottom layer, and maybe the aux return, I've copied that. Nope, they did not even follow. So those are known to be as separate. So it's basically everything in blue or everything as, that is an output, like I'm gonna do right now, I'm gonna build my output uh, EQ on, send to matrix, none by default. I can maybe turn that on. On and post fader. And I'm gonna copy paste that again to all my bus. And I wanna make sure that my bus master is set to zero. It's funny because you can do it on the screen and the fader will follow. So I'm gonna do this, make sure that I'm at zero for my aux. Go back to overview for that aux one. Copy, right click, paste to all. You sure you want to do this? Yes. There you go. Not all my boss are there. Now that I have pretty much tested all my physical input in the back, I'm gonna show you guys how to connect a laptop or a audio device to these consoles. You need a couple things. Um, I believe I was talking about that earlier. 
sorry, let's go this way. Uh, this is a Clark Technic. This is a, cannot read that backward, 9630. It's AS50 to USB converter. So you have a single AS50 port to a USB B port and the internet control on it do not work. So those of you who wanted to buy this with a DL251 to put in your studio and use that with your DAW, there is no more uh, remote control available. There used to be back in the old uh, OS uh, days where well, I'm talking about 32 bit OS. I know there's a better version available on the internet uh, of the uh, snake control. I believe it's the name of the firmware snake uh, program, snake control, uh, but it's never been updated since. So basically, um, I'm going to connect that to my laptop with a USB-C to USB-B port. I'm gonna use a tape return. That way I can do like uh, I'm doing on the wing and flip from my local input or my physical preamp to a virtual machine or a virtual sound check. And I'll show you the process of that. It's really easy. The first thing that we need to do is to set up a generic AS50 device because uh, back in the day they were uh, non-existent in the world of pro series these small box here so i'm gonna set that up i'm gonna do my uh, little auto thing on top here select on my as uh, 50 port 6 i believe it should be in port 6 not in port 1. for each port 6 it's okay it's gonna be device 1. so i'm gonna select all the ports from here come on give, give it to me all the ports from here and I've got to tap them into the tape return. I just assigned 24 channel here of tape return. Uh, because we're running 96K, this is something I need to mention. Uh, you can only do 24 and not 48. When you're running 48K, like on the wing or X32, you can do 48 with a box, but now it's only 24 because I'm running double the clock speed. That's basically it. So I'm gonna do this and I'm gonna find a way because I remember I think there's a way to switch the console uh, input all at once. So I'm gonna do a global uh, change for that. And once I did the global change for that, or I'm gonna manually change them one by one if I don't remember correctly, uh, I'm gonna play back some track and I'm gonna see how that thing sound. Something that is that is apparently not clear uh, when you export stuff from an SD card recorded on a wing or a X32, and you want to um, play that back into Logic. If you import a audio track, it will not load it like I'm having it right now. You need to, as stupid as it, as it is, um, you need to open up your Logic session and you need to drag and drop at the end of the timeline your next uh your your next file and if you drag and drop them like i have 001 from this session here it's the name giving from the console if i click drag it all the way up here it's going to convert a multi-track because this these files are actually all uh 32 track wave from the w live sd card and as soon as you drop them into Logic, it's auto-converting, and it will ask you if you want to load that on a new track, on the existing track, or on a single, like, one after another track. The Pro One is connected uh, over USB here to my box. My box is now powered up by uh, the USB. I'm connected to the port here in the back, and I have a red light, so let's investigate that, what's going on here. So like always, it was just a bad cable or I took the wrong one. Now I got green light. I got green light here. I got sync and I just need to reassign because I play around with some stuff. I just need to reassign my tape return. There we go. So let's see how I can make that sound. That's tough. 
tight. Oh yeah. Can you see the EQ shift here? Really nice. And I could boost it if I really wanted to, add some, you know, bottom snare. Smell amount of EQ, like three to six dB. I'm sure you guys can hear the difference, uh, even though it's just recorded from my phone. That's how amazing these consoles sound. That should be enough for today, you guys. Uh, uh, enough of me playing around with my new toy. I'll keep you guys updated, and I'm gonna start to do probably a couple video on uh, Pro One now. Now that I have one, so why not? Guys, as always, thank you very much for watching. You have no idea how much I appreciate every single one of you spending time uh, learning. I hope we go help you guys learn something, as a well-known YouTuber would say. But me, what I'm gonna say is, thank you. I want you please to take care of yourself, and I see you guys later with my new toy. See ya!